My name is Kishwani. That's K-E-S-H-W-A-N-I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here. GMAT Review, the official guide, the 13th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The book contains 230 problem solving questions. It has 174 data sufficiency questions. We have already solved every single math problem from this book. If you're interested in watching any of the original solutions to the problems, you will find the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. Right now we are in the process of redoing the problems and we are on page number 183. Please turn to it. Page 183, the very first problem that you see there on page 183, problem number 214. Problem number 214, it goes on for a while, but all that they are asking here in, a, in 214 is that we are told, problem number 214, we are told that the reciprocal, reciprocal of R equals to the sum of the reciprocals of X and Y. And the question simply is, what is R? How much is R? If R happens to be, if, if the reciprocal of R, if the reciprocal of R happens to equal to the reciprocal of X and Y, to the, if the reciprocal of R happens to equal to the sum of the reciprocal of X and Y, if reciprocal of R happens to equal to the sum of the reciprocal of X and Y, then how much is R? Let's find out, shall we? Reciprocal of R is simply, 1 over r and we are told that it equals to the sum of the reciprocal of x and y. Reciprocal of x is 1 over x, reciprocal of y is 1 over y and it is the sum of those two. So let's let's find out, shall we? We, we are interested in r. This right now we have the reciprocal of r. We are interested in r. Let's find the common denominator first. This one has a denominator of y, this one has a denominator of x. Let's multiply the top and bottom of this thing by y and let's multiply the top and bottom of this fraction by x. So now we have a common denominator of x times y, x times y, and here we get 1 times y which is y, 1 times x which is x, and that is equal to 1 over r. That's it, we're done. If 1 over r equals x plus y over x times y, that implies that r must equal the reciprocal of this quantity which is x times y over x plus y. And that's our answer. And that's answer choice D. That's answer choice D. Let's go on to the next one, number 215. Number 215, we are told that we have... Tell you what, before we do number 215, before we do number 215, Let's do another problem very similar to 215 and once we have done the problem that we are about to do which is a bonus problem then at that point I would like you to pause the video and then see if you can do number 215 yourself and then compare your work against the work that we will do together in a second. But let's, let's do an extra problem, a bonus problem very similar to 215. So here is what going, here is what's we are being told. We have three people A, B and C and they are going to work independently. Working independently simply means that what A does has no influence whatsoever on whether or not B will succeed and what B does has no influence on, on whether or not A or C will succeed. He, one person's performance does not affect the other, uh, their performance of the other two, per, other two people. That's what it is. We are further told, we are further told that the likelihood the likelihood that each of the each of these rather each of these three people will succeed is is one quarter one third and three fifth respectively. 
All right, fine. Here's the first problem. First question is, how likely, how likely is it that no one would succeed? How likely is it that no one succeeds given the given the situation where we are told that the odds the odds that A will succeed is 25 percent, there is 33 percent chance that B will succeed in solving this problem that, that they're working on, and there is about 60 percent chance that C will succeed. Let's find out what are the odds that no one would succeed. And this is how we do it. The odds that no one probability that no one will succeed, the probability that no one will succeed is equal to the odds is the odds that A will not succeed. These are the odds. This is the odds that A will succeed. The A will succeed. The odds of A succeeding is one quarter. Therefore, the odds that A will not succeed is three quarter. And then the odds that B will succeed is one third. And therefore, the odds that B will not succeed is two third. And similarly. The odds that C will succeed is three fifths. Therefore, there is a two fifth chance. There is a two fifth chance that C will not succeed. One minus one minus the probability of succeeding. That, that is. And now we simply multiply the three quantities. That's what it is. We multiply the three probabilities because these are independent events. These are called independent events. When the events are independent, then the, the odds of one event happening and the other event happening is simply the product is simply the product of their respective probabilities. For example, let me give you a simple example. What are the odds? What are the odds that if I were to flip a coin, listen carefully. What are the odds that I would that if I were to flip a coin, that I would get head in my first toss, and the second on the and, and the tail on the second toss? I'm going to flip the coin twice. I'm going to flip a coin twice. What are the odds that I'm going to get a head on the first toss and a tail in the second toss? Well, the odds of getting a head in the fir first toss is one half. Similarly, the odds of getting a tail in the second toss is still one half. There is a 50% chance of each event. And since these are independent events, these are independent events because the coin does not have a memory. The odds of head or tail happening in the second trial has no bearing as to what happened in the first trial. They are completely independent. Therefore, the odds that I will get a head in the first trial and a tail in the second trial or vice versa is just one quarter. We just multiply the two properties. That's exactly what we're going to do here. So let's get good going then. I see a 4 here, I see a 2 here, I see a 2 here, 2 times 2 is 4, here we have a 4, so that goes away. And this I see a 3 here and that goes away. Oh, there you go. So this is 1 fifth. It's 1 fifth. There is only 20% chance, there is only 20% chance that they will all muck it up. There is only 20% chance that they will all muck it up. Muck it up with an M. M as in Mary. You understand? Let's do, let's do one more, shall we? Let's do one more. Number number part B. What are the odds? What are the odds that only A will succeed? What are the odds that only A will succeed? And that is this is a very probability that only A will succeed which also means that B and C will fail. And how do we calculate it? Well, that's very straightforward. The odds that A will succeed is one quarter. The odds that B will fail, the odds are one third that B will succeed. Therefore, the odds that B will fail is two thirds. And the odds that C will fail is, since it's three fifths, so the odds that he will fail is two fifths. That's it, we are done. Again, we see two times two, four, which you have a four here. And it's simply 1 out of 15. 1 out of 15. 1 out of 15, of course, is much lower than 1 one fifth. Why is it so much? Why is the why, why is the probability so low? Why is the probability so low? This is this is the question that you want to answer. The, the, I want to make sure that you have the intuition. You have the you have the intuition and you have the uh, gut understanding as to what's going on here. Why are the odds so low? that only A will succeed as opposed to there's a there's a 20% chance that all three of them will fail. We just found out that there is a 20% chance that all three of them will fail, whereas this one as opposed to one one fifth is one fifteen. Why is it so low? 
what is so low because it's highly unlikely situation. It is highly unlikely situation. Why is it highly unlikely situation? What you're telling me is that the guy who has the least experience and the least, least know-how of solving this problem, which is why he, his chances are only 25%. I have three people working on the project and one of the guy knows the least about this particular subject. He has the least experience and what I'm asking here is that what are the odds that he will succeed where my other two guys who are more experienced and more knowledgeable will fail. Well, that's not very likely. I have a guy who has a 60% chance of being right, 60% chance of being successful at, at, at this problem. I have another guy who has a 33% chance of being successful at this problem. What are the odds that those two people will fail, but the guy who has only 25% chance will actually figure out the solution? That's not very likely. It's only 1 out of 15. Now, just out of curiosity, just out of curiosity, if you had to, if you had, if we had to, calculate approximately what this is in percentage, how would we go about doing it? What is that in percentage approximately? Well, when we're trying to figure out the percentage of anything, the quickest and the easiest and the fastest, most economical way to figure out the percentage of some, to convert some fraction into percentage, is to do something so that we can convert the bottom of the fraction into 100 as quickly as possible. If bottom is 100, then we all, then we all said, what can we multiply 15 by to make it as close to 100 as possible? as close to 100 as possible. For example, if you were to multiply top and bottom by 7, 15 times 7, 15 times 7 is how much? That's 35, 5, carry 3, and that's 7. Oh, I'm getting 105. I'm getting 105. It is 105. Okay, fine. So it's 105. 15 times 7 is 105. Therefore, we can say, see, I just put an equal sign here. I just didn't realize it is approximately equal to 7%. Approximately equal to 7%. Not quite, but there is only 7% chance, there is only 7% chance that A will succeed where the other two will fail, whereas there is a 20% chance that they will all fail. Let's do one more, shall we? Let's do one more. Part C. What are the odds? What are the odds that A and B will succeed, but not C, but not C. Again, this is going to be very low. This, these odds are going to be also very low, because again, we, we are in the same similar, well, not same situation, but very similar situations. But you, where, where we are, what we are asking here is that, what are the odds that the guy who, who, is, who supposedly knows the most about this subject, this, this particular uh, problem shooting, the, per, the person who has the most experience, he has a 60% chance of being successful at this problem. What are the odds that he will fail? Where the other two guys with the lower odds of getting it right will actually succeed? Well, that's, gonna be, that's not going to be very likely. How is it, how is it, likely, uh, how, how is it uh, very likely that the, guy who, who, the two guys who have lower exp less experience and, 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 and much, no, much less know-how of, the, of this subject will actually succeed? But the guy who has the greatest experience will fail. Not very likely. Let's find out, shall we? Probability that A and B will succeed, but not C. Let's find out, shall we? The odds that A will succeed is right here is one quarter. The odds that B will succeed is right here is one third. The odds that C will not succeed is two fifth. And we see a two here, we see a four here, we get two, and we get 2 times 5 is 10, 10 times 3 is 30. You see, it's 1 out of, third, one out of 30. That's about 3% chance. Not very likely at all. 1 out of 30. Not bloody likely. Do you understand? Not bloody likely that C, who knows the most about the subject, will actually fail and the other two will pass. Let's do the problem that is given in the book. Let's do the problem that is in the book. I need the room. We need a lot of room so we can have to erase everything. problem that appears in the book, we have three people again, X, Y, and Z. X, Y, and Z work independently, same as before. The odds that X will succeed is one-fourth, we are told. The odds that Y will succeed, we are told, is one-half. And the odds that Z 
will succeed is 5 8. Let's see what the question is asking. What are the odds? What are the odds that x and y will succeed but not z? Is that what the book is asking? Because this is exactly but not z, that's right. What are the odds that, uh, what's the probability that Xavier and Iwan will succeed but not Zelda? Well, that's not bloody likely. That's not bloody likely. That's not very likely at all because Zelda is the one who has the greatest odds of being successful. She has more than 50% chance. This person only has a 50% chance of being successful and this person only has a 25% chance of being successful. So the odds that, that we're going to... Uh, it's not very likely that the outcome is going to be such that the person who we expected to succeed, person who, who we thought is most likely to succeed, will in fact fail and the other two persons will succeed. Now, if you ask me what are the odds that they will all fail, well, uh, that, that, that probably is going to be a little bit higher. But the odds that the person we thought was going to be the most likely to succeed will actually fail and the other two will succeed is not very likely. Let's find out, shall we? The odds that x and y, x and y will succeed, but not z, the same as before. We just did that. We, we just did that. The odds that x will succeed is one quarter. The odds that y will succeed is one half. And the odds that z will not succeed, the odds that z will not succeed is going to be three fifth, because he has a five fifth, rather not three fifth because he has a 5 8 chance of being successful, therefore he has a 3 3 8 chance of not being successful. And that's what it is. 8 times 2 is, uh, 4 times 2 is 8, and 8 times 8 is 64, so it's 3 out of 64. 3 out of 64, a very low probability. Very low probability. Again, one more time, just purely out of curiosity, purely out of curiosity, if you had to figure out what that is in approximate percentage, would you be able to do it very quickly? As I said before, when you have to when you have to convert a fraction, when you have to convert a fraction into a percentage, the quickest way is to actually figure out, find out, ask yourself, how can I convert this bottom number into something that comes very close to 100? It doesn't have to be exactly 100. It's not going to be exactly 100 most of the time, but make it damn close, make it as close to 100 as possible. How can we do it? What can I multiply 64 by to make it 100? You see, what we have here is this: 64. And half of 64 is 32. Would you agree? Half of 64 is 32. And if we add them up, we get 6 and a 9. But that's 96. 96 is very close to 100, isn't it? So if you want to multiply top and bottom by 1 and a half, if you want to multiply top and bottom by 1 and a half, 1 and a half times 64, 64 times 1 is 64, and 64 times half, 64 times 1 is 64, and 64 times half is 32. We did that right here. And therefore, 64 times 1 and a half is 96. So now we have 96 at the bottom, which is very, very close to 100. And the top, we get 4 and a half. Do we get 4 and a half? Yes, we get 4 and a half. So the odds that the two guys who were less, the, the, the two guys who were not as likely to succeed will in fact succeed, and my best guy will actually fail, is only about, it's less, it's less than 5%. It's about 4 and a half percent. It's about 4 and a half percent. About 5%, let's just say. Okay? Let's do one more. But like we said, it's not very likely. Let's do one more. What are the odds that... What are the odds that they will all, they will all muck it up? What are the odds that they will all Muck it up. Muck with an M, as in Mary, not an F. Do you understand? Well, let's find out, shall we, very quickly. The odds that no one will succeed, the odds that no one will succeed is, very quickly, so it's one quarter chance that X will succeed, therefore there's a three quarter chance that he will not succeed. 
y has one half chance of being successful, therefore u also has one half chance of not being successful, and z has five eight chance of being successful, therefore there's a three eight chance that he will not be successful. That's what it is. We're done. So again, you see, we get nine over sixty four. It is more likely. What I'm trying to make you understand is that it is more likely that they will all fail. It is three. It is in fact. It is in fact three times more likely. It's a nine as opposed to a three. You see, three over sixty-four, nine over sixty-four. It is three times as likely that they will all fail as opposed to a scenario where a or x and y will fail, but z will not fail. Or rather, x and y will succeed. X and Y will succeed, but not Z. That's not very likely at all because Z was the one we, whom we assigned the highest probability of being successful at this problem. He is the one with the most experience. He is the one with the most know-how. He is the one with the most knowledge. How can he succeed and the other? Uh, how can he fail and the other two succeed? It is not very likely. As a matter of fact, it is three times as likely that they will all muck it up as opposed to this guy, uh, uh, Z. But not a x and y. Just do one more, shall we? Just do the next one. Otherwise, I'll, otherwise you know me. I'll just keep on going and I'll keep talking. Let's go to the next one, number two hundred and sixteen. Number two hundred and sixteen. I need my break. In number two hundred and sixteen, we are given an equation. We are told that f 1 over x minus 1 over x plus 1 equals 1 over x plus 4, then x could be what? We have five answer choices. Here are the five answer choices. Well, I need the room. We really need the room so we can have to raise uh, uh, at least we, we need the room. Here are the five answer choices, A, B, C, D, and E, oh this is very straightforward, 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and negative 4. Now what we need to understand in this problem is that, is that any number, any number divided by 0 is is undefined. If you divide a number, okay, let me very quickly explain what that means actually to be undefined. Very quickly, okay? Make it very simple. For example, 1 divided by 1 of course is 1. 1 divided by 0 0.1 is going to be 10. 1 divided by 0 0.01 is going to be 100. Point divided by 1 divided by 0 0.001 is going to be 1000 and 1 divided by 1 divided by 0 0.00000000001 is going to be some very large number, maybe 1 billion. And finally, when the bottom, this bottom, as, as this, the bottom here, as this bottom gets closer and closer and closer to 0, and eventually when it approaches 0, when you divide any number, doesn't have to be 1, any number at all, any number divided by 0, any number divided by 0, take any number at all, when you divide it by 0, it eventually will explode. It eventually uh, uh, explode. And how do we represent that? How, how do we express that idea of the number exploding? It's because it gets exploding, me it, it explodes. It simply means the number, the answer gets so large, the quantity gets so large, the quantity gets so huge, 1 divided by 1 divided by 0 0.00000000001 maybe is maybe is 300 trillion or maybe 500 trillion or trillion trillion or uh, trillion times trillion times trillion but eventually it gets so large that we can't write it anymore it explodes we can't write it anymore. once if you, as long as if you if you get the if you get the bottom to be close to zero, zero as close to zero as possible eventually it explodes and it becomes infinity it becomes infinity. That's what this says. Any number divided by zero is undefined. And this is how we write it. Any number, any number, any number n divided by zero equals infinity. And therefore, we can't have zero at the bottom. We cannot have zero in the bottom because if, if zero appears in any of these fractions, 
1 over x is one fraction right here. Here's another fraction, here's another fraction. If 0 appears in any one of these fractions, then this whole equation explodes. It, it becomes undefined. The, the equation no longer exists, it's no longer workable. So we cannot have 0 at the bottom. Do you understand? Let's find out, shall we? So the first fraction we have is this, 1 over x. We can't have a 0 at the bottom. We cannot have a 0 at the bottom, which means x cannot be 0. x cannot be 0. Second fraction we have is, second fraction we have is 1 over x plus 1. Again, we can't have 0 at the bottom. When is the bottom going to be 0? Well, bottom is going to be 0. Bottom is going to be 0. The bottom is going to be 0 when x equals negative 1. Because had it been 1 over negative 1 plus 1, we can't have that. That's, that's undefined. That, that is undefined. We cannot, x cannot be, x cannot be negative 1. x cannot be negative 1. The last fraction we have is 1 over x plus 4. 1 over x plus 4. 1 over x plus 4, when is that going to be 0? Well, this, this, this bottom here, x plus 4 is going to be 0 if x happens to be negative 4. If x happens to be negative 4, because negative 4 plus a 4, negative 4 plus a 4, it's going to become 0, it's going to become infinity. The bottom is going to be 0 when x is negative 4. x cannot be negative 4. If x is negative 4 here, negative 4 plus a 4 is going to be 0. We cannot have a bottom 0 at the bottom. If you have a 0 in the denominator, the whole thing explodes. It cannot be negative 4. And the question here is, if, that's the, if, if we are told that that equation holds, if that equation holds, then x could be what? x could be what? Well, we just found out that in that case, x only has two choices left. X, x is either negative 2 or negative 3. All we're going to do is plug in both of these numbers and see which one works. Let's do it. That's it. All the others are gone. It cannot be 0, it cannot be negative 1, it cannot be negative 4. It's got to be either negative 2 or negative 3. Let's plug them both in. Let's plug, in, plug them both in here. So x equals to negative 2 here. We'll try that first. And x equals to negative 3 and see which one works. If x equals to negative 2, then we have 1 over negative 2. 1 over negative 2 minus 1 over x plus 1, which is negative 2 plus 1 equals, we are told that, that has to equal 1 over negative 2 plus a 4. Okay, negative 2, negative 2 plus a 4. 1 over negative 2, 1 over negative 2 is negative half. It's negative half. And here we have minus 1 over negative 2 plus a 1. Negative 2 plus a 1 is negative 1. Is negative 1. And this is our 1, is our negative half. And minus, minus 1 over negative 1, this negative and this negative will become positive. This negative and this negative will make it positive and it will end up with 1 over 1 with a positive 1. A positive 1 and a negative half is a positive half. Is a positive half. Let's see what we get here. Here we get 1 over a negative 2 and a positive 4. Negative 2 and a positive 4 is a 2. There you go. It works. It works. This guy is the answer. The answer is C. Now, now, now we're going to show that negative 3 in fact does not work. Let's do it very quickly. 1 over negative 3, 1 over negative 3, minus 1 over negative 3 plus 1, negative 3 plus 1. Question is, does that equal 1 over negative 3 plus a 4? Let's find out, shall we? So this is 1 over negative 3, which is negative 1 third. And here we're going to get negative, and a negative is going to become positive. A negative 3 and a positive 1 is going to be negative 2. So it's negative half. Or it's going to be positive half, rather. It's going to be positive half. And here we end up with 1 over 4. And half minus a third does not equal a quarter. Half, half minus a quarter. Half minus a quarter equals a quarter. Half minus a half, half right here is our half. Half, half minus a quarter. Half minus a quarter equals a quarter. But half minus a third, half minus a third does not equal quarter. This does not equal. This thing does not work. The answer is not D. Answer is C. Do you understand? Let's do one more. Number 217. Number 217, I need my break one more time.
number 217 says one half raised to negative three times one quarter raised to negative two and one sixteenth raised to negative one equals what? And we are given five answer choices there and we have to simplify this thing and find out which one of the five answer choices matches with what we arrive at. So let's get going. One half, one half over raised to, raised to negative third is just going to remain like this. Let's convert this into one half. You're going to convert this fraction into one half and this fraction into one half. When they are all one half and the basis of all of them are same, you can just add the exponents. So one over four can be written as, one over four can be written as one half squared. One half squared is one fourth. And then outside we have a negative half, a negative two. So outside we have a negative two. So far so good. And similarly, one over 16 can be written as one half raised to four. One half raised to four is same as one over 16. Because two raised to four, two times two is four, four times two is eight, eight times two is 16. One half raised to four is one sixteenth. And on the outside we have a negative half. Or rather negative one. So that's it, we're almost done. So this thing is again come, going to come down the way it is. One half raised to negative three. And here we have one half raised to two times negative two. We have to multiply the exponents. Two times negative two is going to give us negative four. And here we have one half raised to four times negative one. Four times negative one is negative four. There we go, we are done. So what we get is one half. What we get is one half raised to negative 3 minus a 4 minus a 4 which is same as negative 1 half raised to negative 11 a half raised to negative 11 is the answer and that's going to be answer choice B that's going to be answer choice B as in boy I'll see you tomorrow okay bye now